Guyana, a tiny South American nation, was the fastest growing economy of 2020. And it all has to do with oil. More specifically, 8 billion barrels of it. In this video of Economics Matters, we will look at the tiny economy of Guyana and how this country of 800,000 people is said to be the Qatar of South America. But first, some history. Guyana may be on the South American continent, but boy does it like to be Caribbean. It was part of the three remaining vestiges of colonialism on the South American continent. Its demographics are made up primarily of Indian and African indentured labourers which the British, who used to own the island, brought over to work on the sugar fields. And even after its independence in 1966, Guyana's economy has been heavily dependent on sugar. Socialist policies after independence were put in place and everything was nationalised. And everything seemed fine at the start, since initially the government's investment helped the industries. However, as time passed, management skills were lacking and all the sectors stagnated. They simply could not compete in the global market. This led to mass emigration and a lot of people just left Guyana. Then, after 1991, a fantastic year for capitalism and a not so fantastic year for socialism, Guyana suddenly, due to no other external factors such as the dissolution of the Soviet Union, just ditched the whole socialist thing and privatized their industries. And unlike the haphazard mess that was the post-Soviet economy of Russia, Guyana did pretty well with a growth rate of 6% or so till the 2000s. And then it faded away, again, into obscurity till 2018. So now comes the big question. How much money exactly? Well, don't worry, I'm here to do the maths for you. 8 billion barrels have been found. And at $40 a barrel, that means you're looking at about $320 billion in pure hard American buckaroos. Now add on top of that a population of only 800,000 people and that gives us about $400,000 per capita. Now, I know all of this is just for fun since we actually have to look at the per annum production of oil to get a clearer picture. So let's look at some forecasts. 1.2 million barrels per day by 2030 is the most reliable forecast I could find. Let's keep oil prices stable at $50 a barrel across our timeline. And that means the Guyanese government is looking at about $60 million per day or about $22.9 billion per year by 2030. This dwarfs Guyana's current GDP of $6.8 billion by miles. For context, the current revenue of the government is $1 billion. And now we see why the IMF predicted a growth rate of 87.6% in 2020. However, Guyana has many obstacles standing in front of it. We have to understand that growth is not a given for countries that are rich in natural resources. We just have to look at Venezuela, Guyana's neighbour to the west, which stands as a stark reminder to Guyana of what not to become. There is a lot of data to back up the claim that a sudden discovery of vast reserves of oil in a historically poor country can lead to debt crises, economic disaster, corruption, conflict and authoritarianism. There are ways to solve this, such as investing into other sectors of the economy, such as the sugarcane industry, tourism, trade and many others, and allowing oversight to international bodies to regulate the activities of the oil corporations, and also not to rush investment into the economy, since policymakers and officials often underestimate the amount of time it takes to get some serious cash rolling in. Firstly, Guyana does not have a lot of money to set up its own drilling, nor does it have the connections to sell this oil. So large oil corporations like ExxonMobil and others would most likely be doing this stuff for the government at least till a point. Then, after the big bucks start rolling in, the oil giants will most likely take a large cut of the pie to recoup their investments. And then finally, the government will be able to do what it wants with most of the money. And the sky is the limit for Guyana. It could turn into a Norway and set up a carefully managed investment fund for all of that oil money. It could become a tiny Venezuela and subsidize everything for political brownie points. It could spend all of it on fancy hotels and become a tourist hub. Although that would be a long-term plan since the whole no-no virus has shut down this avenue. It could even improve infrastructure that is especially lagging in the poor nation and become a financial and commercial hub. 
sort of like a gateway into South America. So where do I think Guyana is headed? It is almost certain that Guyana has the potential to become the richest country in South America in the next decade. Currently, the richest country in South America by GDP per capita is Chile with a GDP per capita of $16,000. And if Guyana is able to properly utilize its oil reserves in a sustainable manner, they could easily end up with a GDP per capita of double, triple, maybe even quadruple that of Chile. And to end the video, I would like to leave you with a mind-boggling statistic. If oil prices were to go up to their highest of $162 a barrel, then Guyana could be looking at $1.3 trillion. And all of this money for a population of only 800,000. Now only you can imagine the results.